get started and I there you go. I <laughs> got it. I got it. The recording's in progress. Um, so let's just start with an introduction. And I'm really delighted to see this kind of interest in the program. It's it's really heartening. I did the program myself um, back in 2018 when Toronto Crew was offering it. They had offered it at that point for about four or five years. Um, and it was very sort of similarly structured in terms of six and this time it's seven sessions uh, over a period of time. And it, I have to say, was very transformative. It really was something that I thought was a unique experience that gave you a connection to people in a really good, intimate setting that, you know, you share your, your, your desires, your goals, your um, concerns, your, you know, your strengths, your weaknesses, and, and you get a lot of really incredible guidance from um, facilitators who have leadership as their main focus and women's leadership in particular. So I'm delighted that, you know, we've been able to uh, ask and have Vanessa accept as a facilitator for a session like what we did many years ago. Um, and it looks like it's going to be awesome. She's going to tell you a little bit more about it now. But I wanted to also say, because uh, it's been, it's so co-facilitated in, in minor form, only because Farah Kimji, who is a former pre president of Toronto Crew, is going to participate in one session, the second session in particular, because we wanted to make sure, and I don't know um, how many of you are familiar with the various committees on uh, Toronto Crew, but we have an, an inclusion, diversity, equity, and allyship com committee called IDEA. And it is really a great focus with all of our programming. We, we work to try and ensure that we incorporate the idea principles into whatever we're doing. And so we've asked Farah to give a special session on the second session, which gives you the opportunity to think about these issues throughout the the program that you're going to be doing uh, in the fall and to, to try and understand how you, as you move into leadership roles or if you're in leadership roles, what you can do to actually make your, your workplace an inclusive workplace and to recognize all ideas and all inputs from all sorts of different backgrounds. So that's the sort of overview for me. Um, we're delighted, as I say, to have Vanessa participating and facilitating, and I'll give her over to her to have a few words about what the program will look like. Thanks Excellent. everybody for joining us. Thank you, Julie. I welcome Steph. I see you just joined us. Um, so I'm a leadership consultant and coach. I've developing leaders for over 20 years. I've been running my business Mosaic People Development for 12 years. So developing leaders is what I love to do. It's what I'm very passionate about. Um, you know, my passion for leadership really solidified, um, oh boy, I'm trying to think, probably about 14 years ago when I was on my second maternity leave with, I have two sons who are 16 and 14 now. And when I was on my second maternity leave, I had a new leader come into my organization. And at the time I'd been at that organization for five years, I loved my job. I loved my boss. I loved my team. I built a team from scratch and really loved where I worked. While I was on mat leave, this new leader came in and five months after she'd been there for five months while I was on mat leave. So came back, she'd been there five, five months. And literally from the day I joined, she made my life miserable. Um, I don't know if anyone's had a leader like that before, but she she screamed at me in front of people. She chastised me. She criticized everything I did. And what happened to me is I went from a high performing leader to someone who was disengaged within a few months because of the way it was treated. And so I ended up leaving the organization because of this leader. And I know you probably heard the quote, people leave managers, not companies. And I think that's true. And I experienced that myself. And so when I had that awful leadership experience, which quite frankly, I've never had before, it really solidified my goal to make sure that um, as a leadership consultant and coach, no one would have that experience that I'd had. It was a really uh, an awful experience. And that's why I've really dedicated my life to working with leaders. It's, it's what I love to do and I'm passionate about doing. Uh, by any chance of show of hands, has anyone had an experience like that before over your career? Yeah. Yeah. So that's almost half the people here. So it's, yeah, 
And uh, it's, yeah, that's, isn't that amazing that it's, it's literally half the people here, if not more. So it's very common. And so what happens normally with people when they move into leadership roles is they get promoted into leadership roles without any coaching or training, right? And quite frankly, being a leader, it's a different job. And so that's what my goal as a leadership consultant and coach is, is to teach you how to do that job with great, great skills and great confidence. So I wanted you to welcome to the session today. I did have a little bit of an agenda. So Julia, thank you so much for doing that great introduction. And it's been so great partnering with you to get this program ready for everybody. I'm going gonna, gonna to go into the details now. Um, and then we're going to talk about how to register. And, and I want to just, I will have a formal Q&A at the end about the program. But could you just feel free to unmute at any time and just say, hey, Vanessa, could you just tell me a little bit more about that or have a question? I just want to make this very informal and interactive for you. Okay, so as a leader, you set the tone. This is one of the most important parts of the programs, any programs that I run, is to understand that you do set the tone. And so what this means is, as I just mentioned, you make or break the, peer, the experience that people have at work, like that leader did for me. And so my goal throughout this program is that you become a very conscious leader, that you really become conscious of the tone that you set. And we're going to talk about that in the very first session. And you will create a great amount of consciousness as a leader throughout the program by learning all, all the tools that, that um, I'm going to teach you if, if you choose to join us. So when I started my Mosaic People Development, my company, about 12 years ago, one of the things I wanted to do was simplify leadership because leadership is very complex. It's got a lot of facets to it. So I came up with this model and I called this model the three pillars of leadership success. This is what the program is based on. Pillar one is know yourself. Pillar two, as a leader, you have to manage your team. Pillar three as a leader, you have to be able to lead your business. And so you can see module one, we're focused on that first pillar of knowing my leadership style, understanding how you set the tone, developing your mindset. Um, I'm skipping pillar two for a minute, but um, module two for a minute, but pillar three, we're going to move into. So you can see pillar three, four, and five it are all focused on how do you manage your team? How do you coach how do you give feedback and, and manage conflict and give and receive feedback and positive feedback and constructive feedback and overcome your mindset around feedback so you don't avoid feedback? Because I know that's what a lot of leaders do. So we're really going to dive into feedback. You can see module five, how to delegate and develop your team, move your people from developing to fully developed. And then you can see the third pillar is module six and seven, how to really get clear on your, we're going to spend a lot of time talking about what you prioritize, what your priorities are. How do you manage your time around that? How do you set very specific, specific goals aligned with your priorities? And then finally, then the last module is on leading and managing change because we're all, we're all just inundated with change these days. So I want you to be able to lead change properly, understand how to overcome the barriers to change. Um, and as you can see, we've added in, as Julia mentioned, that second module, which I will be attending as a participant like you, I will not be facilitating it. Farah is really going to dive into empowering inclusive leadership and looking at DNI, which I'm so excited about. Okay, so I just want to pause now. Does anybody have any questions yes. about the three pillars of leadership success and how it fits into the modules of the program? Fiona's desk is fine. Any questions about that? All good. All right, terrific. So the first pillar is know yourself. Why do we start with know yourself? Well, because self-awareness matters. You can see this quote here from M MIT Sloan Management Review, right? Companies with stronger financial performance have employees who are self-aware. And that's just the bottom line. So self-awareness is not only great for you in terms of being a more effective leader, it's going to be really good for your organization as well. So the way that the program is designed is to develop your self-awareness, the couple self-awareness with tools, okay? So the example I like to give is feedback. So why do people tend to feedback, avoid feedback? We're going to talk about that in module four. And so you can become self-aware around what the barriers are to giving proper feedback, how to, and, and then the tools piece come in. So we do the barriers piece first, then I give you the tool. 
right? And I'm going to give you like, it's a four-step model of how to give really effective feedback. So that's really how the program is designed is to develop your self-awareness, but to really focus on practical tools. Um, one of the practical tools that we start with is called the DISC profile. It's a self-assessment that you're going to do. It takes about 15 minutes online. Um, just want to pause for a minute. Anybody here done the DISC profile? Just give me a wave out of curiosity. Anyone done the DISC before? Ooh, okay. Nobody's done the DISC. Okay. Uh, okay. I got, I got a couple hands up. All right. A couple people. Love, love, love. If you want to... Um, Put some comments in the chat for those of you who have taken the disc, what you liked about the tool. It'd be great for you to share your own experiences. But this tool is my favorite. The reason I use the disc profile self-assessment is because it's about your work style. It's how you show up at work. So I know, for example, people have used a tool, tool self-assessment like Myers-Briggs is very common. Love Myers-Briggs. But to me, it's more about personality. This is about work style. The other reason I love the DISC and why I chose it for you for this program is because the DISC profile um, doesn't box you in. You are a combination of all four. I'm sure as you read the four components of DISC, um, you can recognize yourself in each of these four components. Um, but what the DISC profile measures are your tendencies. So you tend to, to sort of leverage one or two of these work styles more than the others. And that's what the report is going to show you, which of these your tendencies leverage. And also, how do you change your adjuster style as a leader to meet the needs of people on your team who have different work styles than yourself? Okay. So one of the philosophies for the program is what I call drip learning. Here's what it means. Every module, you're going to learn a new concept. The, the program is designed to build. So every module is building on the module before. We're meeting in person, so it's going to be very interactive. So you learn a new concept. Then we have four, three to four weeks in between. So you're going to go away. You're going to practice what you learned. You're going to come back to the next session. We're going to talk about what you apply, sticking with the theme of feedback. Let's say you gave positive feedback. You're going to come back and say, hey, Vanessa. Hey, everybody. I gave positive feedback. We don't debrief only on what worked. We debrief on what didn't work too, because you're going to apply stuff and you go, oh, well, that was a royal fail. Great. I want to hear about world failures. I want to hear about successes. I want to hear about it all. Because if you have a failure, you're going to learn from it. You're going to do something differently next time. So we're going to debrief. Um, and then review. We're going to do review. The drip learning is not about once and done. I don't bring up a concept and never talk about it again. I'm going to bring it back next time. I'm going to show you how the concept we learned two modules ago relates to the concept we're learning today. So everything is really very much aligned. That's how the program is designed. Um, in terms of peer learning, it's, again, very interactive. You're going to bring your own real life business issues to the session. We're going to talk about your shared experiences. We're going to do lots of breakouts. Um, you will learn that my style is very interactive. So, you know, Q&A is always welcome. Um, you're going to coach each other. I have a lot of experience that I'm going to share with you. You all have a lot of experience as well. Okay. So um, I'm going to put all of the bullet points over here and I'm going to keep quiet for a minute and I want you just to read what you're going to get from the program, what you're going to learn. And please unmute and let me know if you have any questions about anything on the screen. How does that sound? Give me your thoughts in the chat. What are, what are your thoughts on, on some of the outcomes that you'll gain if you choose to participate in the program? How does this sound? Managing conflict is always a good idea in the workplace. Mm -hmm. Confidence, yes. I, that is one thing, Gail. I'm so glad you mentioned that. That is one thing that... I'm going to show you some um, comments that people who've taken the program have said, because I just wanted you to read them. Um, and the, 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 the biggest thing I often get from people, Gail, is my confidence increased and I know that I'm doing it right. Because most people, as I mentioned before, have never had the, the experience, uh, I never had, they get promoted into leadership roles without a lot of specific leadership development. Well, this is going to be a game changer for you. Yeah, and, and it was... 
essentially the same thinking as I, I don't know who just spoke because I was typing at the same time, but um, but that was it. As soon as I read that line about um, I think it was managing conflict or or conflict communication, um, that was that was it. You know, when yeah. that kind of thing is always takes a whole pile of confidence, which you know you have to kind of <clears throat> excuse me drum up sometimes. Um, so yeah, that's where I was thinking as well. That's as soon as I stopped, that was it. Mm, love it. Yeah. And Gail, it's because you've never taught how to do that. Like, it's not your fault. If there's anything on that list, you're like, oh, God, I, don't, yeah. I don't know how to do that. Well, where, when would you have ever learned how to do that? Right. You don't yeah. learn in university. Yeah. And even the next one to create that high performing motivate, like you really need to have that kind of confident power. I'm not sure power is the right word, but that confident presence, I think is the word I'm looking for. I love the words power and presence. Yeah. Power is an interesting yeah. word because you can have a lot of positive power. Powerful well. presence. <laughs> love it. Um, Steph, positive communication. Yeah. Yeah. We start with positive communication day one, Steph, with the DISC profile. It's a lot about communication and your style and how you can change or adjust your style to meet the needs of other people. So that is a big one. Uh, and then I added some bullets in terms of the second session that we've added that Far is going to do. So these are, this is what she's going to cover. And I, I can't wait personally to take her session and learn from her. I love her last bullet around leading with empathy. I, I really believe that empathy is one of those key leadership traits that is absolutely critical now more than ever before. Okay. Um, so in terms of dates and times, let's go into a little bit of the logistics. I know we, we have about six minutes left and I want to get to your questions. So these are the dates and times we are going to meet downtown Toronto, um, nine to 1130 every time you will get a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with me, which is amazing. And we're going to talk about, um, scheduling that together. Once you join the program, we're going to talk about your focus for that session. We're going to craft your focus together. We're going to have a very tangible goal for your one-on-one -on -one session with me. So that's going to be terrific as well. Um, so Julia, do you, would you like to talk to registration and next steps? Certainly. Yeah. Um, so that was great. Thank you. Dennis. I think it gave a good overview of what people might expect. Uh, just as a quick follow-up, the in-person sessions are being held at one of our sponsors who's graciously agreed to have their space used for the program, which is JLL Canada, and they are in the Bay Adelaide Centre. So they are really right downtown um, in Adelaide Street, just at sort of Bay and Adelaide, so the Bay Adelaide Centre. Um, okay, so uh, in terms of registration, this, it, it was a bit confusing only because um, this was actually a uh, session that needed to be registered for as well, but the next registration part is actually going to take place on June the 1st, and we really are trying to do this as a first come first served um, basis registration. There are a couple of eligibility requirements. Clearly, you need to be an active um, Toronto crew member. Um, as at the time that the program is delivered. So that means now, and it will mean into presumably early next year because there are a couple of sessions that take place in January and February or January. Um, so, that, so that is key. The other ones are not as key. They're more sort of ideally, and, and there are exceptions that can be made for this, but we really aren't focused on people in their very early career in this program. We really want people who've been doing this for a little bit anyway. We ideally think a minimum of eight years of professional experience, and it doesn't mean eight years in the real estate world. It's just eight years in the as a professional in, in a career. The, that is gets you to a place where you have been in the office and as experience and had exposure to certain types of issues that you're hoping to get some help managing or guiding, uh, guiding through. So that's just something that is a would like to, but mostly for you as the person who's taking it, you'll get more from this, I think, if you've had kind of at least that kind of um, time frame in the professional role. The uh, next thing is, the cost, and it is um, 
very nicely being subsidized by Toronto Crew. So I, I tried 10 different ways to put this out there, but essentially uh, the cost to each participant is $2,000. And we do anticipate, we recognize that that isn't a, a insubstantial amount. And hopefully many of you will have employers who are supportive of this type of program. And we didn't mention, but Vanessa is happy to do some kind of certificate at the end of it to indicate that you've completed it, if that's something an employer would like, if that's conditional for them to be supportive in, in a financial capacity. So that that is something that we've um, uh, we've put in the information, the more detailed information that's coming out shortly. And uh, as I say, Toronto Crew has itself covered. I think it's up to a thousand dollars per participant. So it's two thousand plus uh, another thousand that Toronto Crew is covering, which is, as I say, very generous and appreciated. So um, I think the registration button will go live on June one, and. I don't know what time, I guess we can figure that out. Maybe it's, I'm assuming noon or something, we could make it a specific time so that people aren't trying to sit up until 12.01 a.m. figuring out if it's active, um, but we'll figure that out and, and communicate that certainly to everybody on this call, but also more generally to people who aren't here and in the e-newsletter that we get sent every Tuesday. Perfect. That's true. And payment, sorry, payment is due two weeks after you've been accepted as a registrant. Oh, how many spots? Thank you. I was going to mention that 12 spots. So we want to keep the program really small, intimate. Um, it's going to be transformative. And so it's all the conversations we talk about are confidential. So we've selected to keep that group fairly small at 12. And, and so I would like to also say, um, uh, that there are sort of sessions that could be done in the future. If you are feeling that this is, you know, you've been doing this for a long time and you're feeling that you're not sure that it's, it's, you, it isn't the more advanced level that you're looking for, please let us know that because uh, as part of the professional development committee, which is the committee in Toronto crew that's been working on putting this on for the Toronto crew members, we want to be sure that we're offering programming that people are finding useful. And if, you know, if you've been in the industry for a long time, you've already had some leadership roles, there are possibilities in the future for more advanced leadership courses or programs. This is really aimed at the, the person who's been doing it, you know, at least eight years, potentially, and not even leadership, just in a, in a professional role for that period of time. Um, but if you're thinking, this seems a little bit more like things I've already know, please let us know, because we are thinking about future programs for those more advanced or more senior in the leadership role. Julia, there was a question from Steph in the chat. Is it possible to open registration to the folks that have joined this call first? Um, I don't know that I can do that. I My worry with doing that is that I did have people sign up that couldn't come today um, and it gets a bit confusing. I don't want them to be penalized for not being able to get away to, to join it. So I hope that that makes some sense. But I think Steph, if you know you're ready to go, you can talk to whomever you need to talk to about getting the funding in place now. You mm -hmm. can say, you know, June 1st, like put a note in your calendar, get ready to register June 1st. And that's why we wanted to do this weeks ahead of June 1st. So if you need to talk to anybody about getting the funding, et cetera, you can do that. You have two weeks to do that. So you're ready to go June 1st. It's not going to be a problem if you're ready to go on June 1st, yeah, for sure. Perfect. Okay. Excellent. So we're, we're at 1230. I don't want to keep people longer than, than we promised. Uh, you know, certainly reach out to, to me or um, uh, I think there was Lee Rosar is the other individual who's named in the e newsletter so that you can reach out to either one of us with questions about anything related to the program. And thank you, Vanessa, for taking the extra time today to introduce it to everyone. And thank you, everybody, for joining. And hopefully we'll We'll see some of your applications. And I'm going to stay back now for questions. So if anyone has to run to a meeting or anything like that, please feel free to do that. Thank you so much for coming. If anyone has any questions, um, let's let's handle questions now. Okay. I'm seeing a lot of people have jumped off, but there may be oh, a few. Does yeah. anyone have any questions? 
Um, I, I guess I have a question. So 9 to 11.30 and we're kind of <clears throat> divvying it up through the fall and into the winter. And how do you, um, like, how do you guys, how do you want us to show up? Is it sort of like we're there to study and you're just going to kind of collaborate on your sort of, um, what am I trying to say, your information or your education or whatever? Yeah, your, um, God, I cannot think of vocabulary right now. I'm so sorry. <laughs> So what's it going to look like, Allie? Like, what's it going to yeah, look like? Yeah, like, like, is this like textbook style or are we just kind of, um, yeah, sharing anecdotal experiences or, yeah. Good question. It is a structured facilitated program. So you will get access to a learning hub. Um, on the learning hub, you will have six workbooks, one for each session. And there's step-by-step -step that we're going to go through in each session. So for example, um, the DISC session, you're going to do your DISC in advance for the first module. I'm going to take you through page by page. We're going to do an action plan. You're going to do a breakout. So yeah, the program is structured. Um, and within that structure, I give lots of time for questions, for breakouts, for shared experiences, et cetera. Does that answer your question? Sure. Okay. Great. Any other questions? I have a question, Lori. Um, what's the commitment level? Like, I know we've got the the monthly one one or one and a half hour sessions, but like uh, during that month, what uh, how much time do we is there time spent doing other things? Like, is there assignments and? Good question. Homework? So at the end of each session, you will have homework. So the homework is related to what we learned in that module. And the homework is something you're going to apply on the job. So for example, going back to the session on feedback, your homework will be to give either positive or constructive feedback. So the homework is not adding more to your plate. The homework is integrating your learning into your day-to-day. -day. Other questions? Christine, anything else you're noodling? I was actually just trying to get your uh, Lee and Julia's emails because I think the links don't work for me um, in in the email. So I just sent a note. Oh, OK, great. I was, I was going to say I was just gonna, I was just going to send you an email and send you a note to say this was actually the reason why I signed up for crew uh, at the beginning of last year because I'd heard great things about the program um, and was it was too bad that it wasn't available last year. Um, I actually won't be able to attend um, because I'm going on mat leave in in August, but I really hope that you know uh -huh. you do do this program again in uh, 2025. Because oh, I was really looking forward to it. <laughs> oh, I hope so. I hope we'll do it. Next congratulations. That's wonderful. Thank you. Pat, any awesome. other thoughts? Thanks, everyone. Um, I, I do have a thought. I was going to message you on the side. The organization that Christine and I work for, we're constantly looking for different ways to develop our managers, accounting managers, and specifically in the department that I work in. So I'm, I was just looking up uh, Mosaic People Development. I was looking at your actual website to see if we could maybe connect through there um, and just see if there's anything else you can offer outside of crew, because not everybody in the organization uh, is part of crew. So, but we're constantly looking for ways to develop our, our managers. So I was just going to ask if there were other programs that you offer as well. Oh, for sure. Should we sidebar that? Yeah, we could sidebar that. Okay, I'll put my um, my email in the chat. Yeah, or your website or something. Yeah. Vanessa, yeah. Vanessa at mosaicpd.com. Good. That's exactly where I went. <laughs> okay, amazing. <laughs> amazing. Steph, anything else for you? I'm good. Thanks. Okay, wonderful. Well, thank you so much, everybody. I really appreciate you being here and hope to see many of you in the program in the fall. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.